we started out this whole journey going to sum of products expressions and POS expressions, po uh, product of sums expressions, by talking about we're starting with the truth table and we need to get logic, right? So why are we going the other way around? Well, I guess just to show it can be done, right? So we're going to talk all about now taking a product of sums. So we have a product of sums. We're going to come up with a product of sums expression and we're going to convert it to a truth table just to kind of get you used to the concept of how the product of sums works. So we've got, I'm going to do A or B or C bar ended with A bar or B ended with a bar or B bar or C, and we'll put a bar over it, what the heck, okay? So that is a product of sums expression. We have a sum ended with a sum ended with a sum. What does the truth table look like? Well, we've got three inputs again, right? A, B, and C. Three inputs give us eight possible combinations of ones and zeros. Let's get them all down here. All right, now, what does that look like for this expression, for x, okay? Now, we've got these three sums, right? We have uh, a or b or c bar. When is this guy equal to a zero? Well, for a sum, the only way we're gonna have a zero output is if we have zero or zero or zero, right? Well, that means a has to be a zero b has to be a zero, and c has to not be a zero. Only other option is a one. So when is a a one, b, excuse me, when is a a zero, b a zero, and c a one? This row right there, all right? So we've got one row right now, this guy, with all three of its inputs going into an OR gate is gonna generate exactly one one on the output. Now, what about A bar or B? When is this guy equal to a zero? Well, it's equal to a zero for a two input OR gate, zero or zero. So when A bar is a zero and B is a zero. I know I used the term and in there, but remember, we're talking about the zeros in this case. So zero or zero gives us zero. A bar, a zero means A has to be a one. So we know it's gonna be in the bottom half of this truth table. B has to be a one. No, excuse me, B has to be a zero. So we know it's gonna be in these two rows of the truth table. When A is a one, B is a zero. What does C have to equal? Well, since it's not a part of that sum, we know that it can be whatever it wants to be. It can be a zero or a one. So actually this term right here puts a zero here and a zero there. All right. So that takes care of this guy and this guy. When is this guy equal to a zero? When is A bar or B bar or C bar equal to a zero? Well, it's equal to a zero when A is a zero, A bar is a zero, B bar is a zero, and C bar is a zero, which means A is a one, B is a one, and C is a one. That gives us a zero right there, all right? Now, we know that this sum of products expression is going to output a zero if this is a zero or this is a zero or this is a zero. That's how the AND works. If there's a zero to any of its inputs, we output a zero. So what do we do with these other spots? I mean, these places that are blank, what do the products, A, excuse me, what do the sums, A or B or C bar, and the sum A bar or B, and the sum a bar or a B bar or C bar, what are those equal in those spots? Well, we've already isolated that these guys equal zero in specifically these four locations, and that's it. Well, what does it mean for this location and this location? Well, that means that all three of these guys all equal one, okay? The, these are the unique positions where each one of those sums equals zero. So therefore, for all the remaining rows, the ones that we haven't filled in values for, those guys are going to be one and one and one, which is one. So all the rest of those locations have ones in them. All right. Now, just to keep in practice, let's go ahead and do the circuit for this guy. 
we are going to do again that that bus notation. So we have this bus notation where we've got the three wires A, B, and C. Now, just like the sum of products expression, product of sums expressions go through two layers of logic. They have a layer of OR gates that they go through before getting into an AND gate. So in this case, we have one, two, three. So there's going to be one, two, three OR gates. And the output from all three of those OR gates goes into a single AND gate. All right. Now, what about the inputs? Well, just like we did for the circuit for the sum of products expression, we're just going to tap off these wires where we need them and pass them, pass them through an inverter before going into the OR gate when needed. So we've got A or B or C bar. So we've got A or B or C bar. And then for this second OR gate, we've got A bar or B, right? And then for the last one, all three of them are going through inverters before going into the OR gate. All right. And there you go. That is the circuit. But remember, we also talked about De Morgan's theorem giving us this idea in the sum of products expression, how we can replace all the gates in the sum of products expression with NAND gates. We can do the same thing here. And it's based on that De Morgan's theorem, which says that A and B bar is the same thing as A bar or B bar. We do this with a circuit. We can say, okay, we've got an AND, right? This AND gate, well, it works so that the only way we can output a 1 here is if both A and B are equal to 1. This is exactly the same circuit if I run two inverters at the output for this AND gate. This, this piece right here, this A and B inverted, that's this guy right here. That's that. So I can replace this this with A bar or B bar. I can take that inverter, push it through this AND gate in order to create uh, an OR gate with inverted input. So that becomes A, B. A goes through an inverter to become A bar. B goes through an inverter to become B bar into an OR gate now. And now I can't forget this OR, this inverter. So that inverter now is at the output. So an AND gate, a single AND gate, is exactly the same functionality as an OR gate, uh, an OR gate with inverted inputs and an inverted output. So I can replace this gate right here, this, this AND gate. I can replace it with an OR gate with an inverted output and inverted inputs. All right, same circuit. Didn't change anything about the functionality of the circuit. We're still doing this same truth table. But by taking this inverter, putting it back to the tip of this OR gate, this inverter putting it to the tip of this OR gate, this inverter putting it to the tip of this OR gate, this inverter putting it to the tip of this OR gate, I can create a, a product of sums with nothing but NOR gates, all right? And there you go. We've talked a little bit about sum of products and products and product of sums expression, gone from a truth table to the expression to the circuit, and gone from the expression to the truth table also, and showed how we can use the NAND logic or the NOR logic to implement both of them.